watching CT22 with Eric Parker, sponsored by Hartford Healthcare. Welcome back. It is a big political year here in Connecticut. Joining us to talk about the openings and who's running or may run are the heads of Connecticut's two main political parties. Nancy DiNardo is chair of the Democratic Party. Ben Proto is chair of the state Republican Party. Thank you both for being with us. Uh, one of the things that caught our attention this week was a Chris Keating article in The Current about the huge number of candidates who have signed up to run uh, or at least express interest in running for secretary of the state. Nancy, I want to start with you. There's seven Democrats who have already said that, a number of them already raising tens of thousands of dollars in exploring this. What do you think the draw is to that position in particular? Well, I think it, certainly um, the position is an interesting and challenging position, but I think what it really is is Democrats have been so successful in winning those seats that they're not open that often. So when uh, an opportunity comes to uh, run for a seat, the, um, there will be a lot of people who are interested in it, uh, seeing this as their opportunity to run. And certainly Denise Merrill has been in that position for a long time. Ben, I want to ask you, there's some Republicans who are already saying they uh, are interested and there's some who have raised, in fact, the highest uh, amount of money raised is a Republican at this point in the race. So this is a, a, a seat that has given some statewide candidates a boost. People like Ella Grasso, Susan Bicewitz, uh, Barbara, uh, Barbara Kennelly. So is this something that Republicans think if you get into that chair, maybe there's even more higher aspirations ahead? I think the, in, the initial uh, interest is in serving the state. Uh, and to kind of follow up on your question to Nancy, I think one of the reasons why there's so much interest in this seat as opposed to in the past is because it became a more high profile office in 2020. Uh, and with no disrespect to any person who's ever held the Secretary of State's office, uh, it was always kind of a secondary office. It comes after the legislative candidates on the ballot. Uh, but what, what happened during COVID and um, the secretary's position and how often she was out front and what happened with our election laws, I think made it more interesting to a lot of people and more interesting to the general public and the voters. I guess if you asked us if we'd all know who the secretary of the state in Georgia was a couple years ago, we'd all think you were crazy, but we all probably know that name. Nancy, I want to ask you about the race for governor. I had both of you in studio uh, in the fall of 21. And at that point, the governor had not declared that he was running for re-election. He is now. Uh, what do you think about uh, the timing of that announcement? And he's now full speed ahead uh, on that race for re-election. Well, I think that um, I'm really excited about the fact that uh, the governor has chosen to run again. I mean, polls have shown that, you know, he's double digits ahead of any potential candidates in Connecticut. And a poll, nationwide poll showed him as the most popular Democratic governor in the country. And I think it's because of the job he's done. He's done a great job with the pandemic. I mean, our, our finances are phenomenal. People are coming to the state, uh, more and more people to live here and businesses are coming. We have a, I believe it's a $3.1 billion um, rainy day fund, which the Republicans want to use for uh, paying um, the, uh, putting it towards the budget. But, um, He's put money into the pension fund. He has also, um, you know, made sure that he's worked with Democratic and Republican mayors and first selectmen to make sure everybody is getting money within the uh, their cities and towns. There's more money in people's pockets because he hasn't raised taxes, which is something that hasn't happened um, in a long time. Uh, there's been a lot of investments in uh, our infrastructures and with the uh, ARP. Um, we have gotten more money to cities and towns. So I think uh, the governor has done a great job and he is in a great position to win again. Well, certainly, Ben, I'm sure uh, man, many members of your party would disagree with some of what uh, Nancy said, at least, if not much of it. So when are we going to see some people uh, take that banner that's behind you there and put it behind a podium and announce that, hey, I'm a Republican and I'm running for governor? I think you're probably going to see uh, some action uh, probably within the next week. Um, and I think uh, the governor has some issues that he has to deal with. Uh, you know, I think just a couple of days ago, the Hartford Current reported that um, inflation is the highest it's been in 40 years. Consumer prices are going through the roof. Interest rates are rising. Um, Joe Biden didn't know what the cost of meat was. He had to ask a friend of his. Uh, and the price of gasoline is going up. So I think uh, we've got some serious economic issues in Connecticut. Um, I know uh, Nancy has uh, kind of sugarcoated the governor's 
uh, position. But at the end of the day, the state of Connecticut ranks dead last or nearly dead last in every important fiscal category when we rank states and first or near first in every uh, category that a state does not want to be the top of the list at. And look, just recently, you know, the governor, uh, I think, completely uh, messed up the uh, home test kit situation. He misled the people of the state of Connecticut uh, when he said that they were on order. They were sitting in the plane. They were ready to take off. He had photos. He had no photos. They weren't sitting on the plane. It wasn't ready to take off. And he didn't have them. And he had to go to his friend at CVS and pay retail uh, for those kits. Um, and, you know, we, he's now asking us to put uh, COVID patients back into nursing homes. Last time we did that, uh, we saw our death rates in, uh, skyrocket. So I think the governor has a number of issues he's going to have to deal with that are not going to be good for him. Nancy, I want to uh, switch now to Congress, and I just want to ask you, just a second, I want to ask you about the congressional race. Uh, nationwide, people are saying that maybe Johanna Hayes could be in trouble. We only have a couple minutes left, so a quick answer if you could, but do you think there's any concern in the 5th fifth, fifth District for Democrats? Well, our congressional people always run like they are not ahead, but Johanna Hayes has done a great job in representing uh, her district as well as all of our other candidates. And um, she is very good at that. And I know that one of the candidates that's running against her lost his state Senate race and he doesn't even live in the district. But I think Johanna Hayes has proven that she is a good congressperson. And how about the race for Senate, Ben? Uh, is there a Republican who could take down Richard Blumenthal? I think you're going to see a number of Republicans getting into that race in the near future. Um, and that's going to be a very interesting race. Uh, and I think Johanna Hayes is in serious trouble. Uh, I think she uh, is probably not going to be the Congress uh, member of Congress uh, come November of next year of, the, of this year. Um, she has not done a good job. Uh, she can't hang on to staff. Uh, she does lousy constituent work. She's very rarely seen. And quite frankly, she's indicated she just doesn't like the job. Uh, and she doesn't like what she does. I think Johanna Hayes uh, will be a, a retired member of uh, Congress come January of 2023. All right. Some bold predictions from both of you. Uh, we uh, have a long way to go. We're in the correct year, at least. So we're getting closer. But many months to go until Election Day. And I hope you will both join us again to uh, to tell both your party's positions on this and your candidates as we get closer to Election Day. Nancy DiNardo, Ben Proto, thank you both for being with us here on CT22. Thank you, Eric.